So this video is an extension of this JWT authentication tutorial that I did. And several people asked about how can you do a similar thing but with Next.js and server-side rendering. So in this video, we're going to look at exactly that. Now, 99% of the React code is exactly the same. So I figured instead of you watching me set up a Next.js project from scratch, that I just do that ahead of time. So in this video, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with this tutorial and that you're familiar with how to set up Apollo and Next.js. If you're not, I'll link a video talking about that. Now, I went ahead and set up a folder with Next.js and all the React code that we wrote before um, in a file. So if you go to this URL, and I'll link this below as well, I made a new branch called Next.js Starter Code. And uh, I created a new folder called web slash Next.js. And basically, it's a clone of our web folder, um, except set up with Next.js instead of create React app. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get it to work because there's one piece that does not easily translate over. And that piece is when you refresh the page and the page is being server-side rendered, how do we get the token, the access token, and refresh the token and all that jazz? So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. So first I figured I'd start over with just a quick overview of what we're going to actually implement in this video. So the following thing is going to happen. So when the user makes a request to our Next.js server, so for example they visit the slash profile page, what we want to happen is we want to send the refresh token to the Next.js server, um, right? And we're storing this refresh token in a cookie. So the cookie needs to go with this profile request. And then what our Next.js server is going to do is it's going to take that refresh token that's stored in a cookie, it's going to send it to a GraphQL server, it's going to get an access token, it's going to use this access token to then make a request for all the GraphQL data that we need, the query for the page, um, and then we're going to use that information and send back HTML to the user's browser and also send them back the access token so they can make further requests. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So what I'd like to do is start with setting up this part where we can actually send a cookie to the Next.js server. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna be focusing a lot of our time in the web folder, or web-nextjs lib Apollo. So this is the main folder we're gonna touch. This has all of our Apollo configuration inside of it, and this is where we're going to go ahead and fetch a new access token and all that fun stuff. But before we do that, we're going to head to our server folder and make a quick change in our send refresh token file. Because in this file, this is how we create a cookie. In this JID cookie that we create, uh, we mapped it to only be sent on the refresh token path. But that's not going to work for us because we need it, remember, to be sent to the Next.js server no matter what path we're going to. Now the Next.js server only sends it to the refresh token path but when we're sending it here, we only want we want it sent on every request, basically, every route. So if we want it on every route, we don't want to specify a path. The other thing to note about this is when you're creating this cookie, we want it to work um, on the www.example.com domain and api.example.com. So this is relevant when you are using a custom domain in production. I thought I'd mention this. So your website's going to be, for example, on this URL, and your API is going to be on this URL. And you want the cookie to work on both of these subdomains. So for that to work, you just need to specify a domain of .example.com. So you notice we have just a dot in front of what our domain is, so that works on all the subdomains. So we're not in production. We don't have to worry about that. But if you were to use this in production, you're going to need to add that. OK, so now that we set this up, uh, what we can do is the cookie should be sent to our server. So inside of our Apollo file back here, we're going to basically put all of our logic in this get initial props function. So this is something that runs on the server um, and allows us to do any kind of server rendering or get any kind of data and make requests inside of it. So what I'm going to do to just start off to see how this works is we have access to the request and we have that based on the context here. So context destructuring and it's nested context is twice here. So we're going to say um, 
if request, we also just want to check if we're on the server because this code gets um, run on the server side and on the client side. So what I like to do is create a little function called is server. And the logic that we do here, and you'll see this, and it's right here. And a lot of Next.js examples. So the way we check whether we're on the server or not is to see if the window is undefined. Um, because if it is undefined, that means we're on the server. Uh, if you're in the client or in the browser, you have access to the window. So here we're going to say is server, and we're going to have this condition. So here I'm going to say if we're on the server, I would like to console log the request dot headers dot cookie. So this is just me reading the uh, cookies that were sent with the request so I can see which ones were sent. All right, so this is my Next.js logs. I have that up and running. I also have the server up and running as well. So you're gonna have both of those. And I'm just gonna come over here to the website and I'm gonna just log in with a Bob. So I'm gonna log in and if you don't have a user already, Go ahead and just register a new one. All right. So I have uh, inspect open here. I have application, and then I have under storage cookies open. So I can see I have a, a, my JID cookie here. So now if I refresh the page and I go to my logs over here, I can see a string of the cookie header. So I can see JID is equal to, and I have access to that cookie. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you see that because that means we're sending this cookie to the Next.js server. And that allows us to then use this cookie, which is our refresh token, to get an access token. Okay, so we wanna parse that string. So to be able to parse it, we're gonna say import cookie from cookie. So go ahead and install this library if you don't already have it. And we're gonna say const cookies is equal to cookie.parse. And then we can say if we have a JID cookie, we then want to act, get our access token. So this is the logic that we used in our create react app example to fetch a new access token. So we're going to use this same fetch request over here. So we're going to fetch localhost 4000. That's where our server, GraphQL server is at. We're going to do our refresh token route. Now, the only difference is we're going to have to specify a cookie header ourselves because we're a server and cookies aren't automatically sent, uh, whereas they are with your browser. And so here we're going to say JID is equal to cookies.jid. And just need to add a plus sign there. So we're going to say const response is equal to await that fetch and the data is equal to response.json and then we can console log the data so now let's take a look at our logs we can refresh this and we can see that we are indeed getting an access token so so far what we are doing is when we refresh the page the browser is going to send our cookie to our Next.js server, and in our Next.js server, we're just using that cookie to get an access token. Okay, so here we're going to say let server access token equal to just an empty string, and then I'm going to say server access token is equal to data access token. So by default, it's going to be an empty string, but if we get an access token, we're going to set it here. So then in this get initial, not, yeah, get initial props function, we're actually initializing the Apollo client. And we can see that here, init Apollo client. Now we want to tell Apollo client about the access token that we just got. So we're going to say as a second parameter, we're going to pass in our access token here. So I'm going to command and then click on this to go to the definition. And we're just going to add this as a parameter. 
And I'm using TypeScript, so I added a type definition here. Now, this is checking for if they're on the server, so we can do the same check with our function that we created, just so this is just a little bit easier to read, same logic. And we're just going to pass our server access token only when we're on the server. Um, and this is happening on the client side, so we're not going to pass it in here. So when we create the Apollo client, we know the access token. So we're going to go here, and we're going to create a parameter for this as well. And then we're just going to scroll down. So you'll notice the token refresh link that we are using before in our React project. And we're going to scroll down to the auth link. So the auth link here, what it does is it's uh, adding the authorization header. So all that we're going to do is on the server side, so we're going to check if we're on the server, we're going to use our server access token. Otherwise, we use the get access token function that we're used to using. So this is what's going to happen on the client side. And again, this is the same logic as we were using in our other project in the create react app example. We have a global access token which we are setting and getting using these functions. Okay, so we're just going to use that access token now um, when we're on the server. And so now any GraphQL requests that we make on the server are going to use that access token and are authenticated. So now we are good to try making an authenticated request to, uh, for example, our buy route uses an authenticated route. We can test that out now. So now if I go to the buy page, I'm just going to make this cache first. So with uh, Next.js or server-side rendering in Apollo, what happens is it's going to fill the cache with the data. That way it doesn't have to make a request to the server when it gets to the client. And so for us to read from the cache, we're just going to say cache first as the fetch policy here. And also the fetch policy is cache first by default. So we can also just remove that if we want to and simplify it like this. So now if I refresh the page, what's going to happen is it's going to server-side render. It's going to make a request to our GraphQL server to get a refresh token or to get an access token using our refresh token. And then it's also going to get the data for this page. So we refresh and we can see it's right here. And notice when I refresh, there's no loading state. And that's because the loading is happening on the server, right? Compare this to our home page, which is using network only. If you refresh, you can see how it loads for a second and then displays the data. Nice. So the last thing is you'll notice when I came back to the buy page, it actually says error here. But when I refresh, it works. That's because we're not setting the access token in the browser. So what we're going to do as a, just a last step is we're going to send our server access token to our, the browser. And the way we can do that is at the end of this function, we are returning an object. And anything we return in this object is actually going to be sent to the browser. So check this out. I'm going to say, Bob, hey. And we're going to see this show up in the browser. And where we can see this is if we right click and view page source. Um, we can actually see the uh, source and there's this script tag called next data and this is what I'm talking about. So one thing we'll see here is my Bob Hay, right? That shows up there. So what we can do instead of that, we can pass our server access token. All right. So now if I refresh the page, we can now see that our server access token has been passed to the browser. So now I can use this server access token on the client side. All right, so that just means in our with Apollo at the top here, we can get this as a parameter. Oops. And so here we're gonna say if we're not on the server, so is server, we'll just make sure we're doing this on the client and we do not already have an access token for whatever reason, we are going to set the access token using the server one we got. So perfect. So what that allow us to do is now if I refresh from the home page and come over here to buy, you'll notice it has the content there. It uses our access token that it got from the server to be able to get this protected data. And then when we refresh the page, it's going to server-side render 
um, and it's going to fetch an access token as well. So there you go. That is the difference, and that is how you can set it up using Next.js and doing server-side rendering. So all this code is going to be up on GitHub, and I'll create a new branch showing this finished code if you want to check this all out.